From WSNC in Winston-Salem, this is Triad in Focus with Ben Donnelly. And good morning, good morning, radio neighbors. This is your man, Baron Bruce, WSNC 90.5 FM. Welcome to Triad in Focus. And, uh, you know, it's another beautiful Friday has arrived, which only means another exciting and informative edition of Triad in Focus. Joining me this morning is actor, writer, director, producer, and to add to his extensive list of accomplishments, artistic director of the North Carolina Black Repertory, the accomplished Mr. Jackie Alexander. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, man. Good morning. Now, uh, guys, I just want to give a brief uh, introduction of Mr. Alexander, as if he really needs one. But Mr. Alexander hails from the renowned Billy Holiday Theater located in Brooklyn, New York, Hey, Brooklyn. And whereas he served as artistic director for the legendary Billy Holiday Theater in New York from 2013 to 2015. Am I correct in that saying that? Okay. And under his tenure, the Billy Holiday Theater received the prestigious privately funded Mellon Grant for the first time in over 30 years. And this happened on your watch and on your watch as artistic director with the uh, Billy Holiday Theater. That is awesome. Can you please just kind of go into that and let me know what that felt like it was great you know the theater um had been around since the early 70s but we hadn't been receiving private funding and we did some high profile shows we got wendell pierce into a show brothers from the bottom in in 2015 has some success and and that grant actually they have to reach out to you uh so we got a letter and um it was kind of late when we got the letter we're like well we should give it a shot and it came through and uh you know, it's huge because once you get into those private funding circles, uh, it can really help grow a, a theater, you know, because right. theater, not-for-profit theaters are always struggling financially, looking for support. Mm-hmm. So it was huge, and it was also, you know, just the pres- the prestige of being awarded that grant. So it was very exciting. It was very exciting. The team, we did a great job. You know, everybody worked really hard to get that in, and when it comes through, you're just thrilled. <laughs> oh, well, exactly. Well, you have no choice. I yeah. mean, this is like a beautiful thing that's happening there. You know, and this is, again, like I said, under your tenure that this happened. So, you know, that just personally, that has to be like the accomplishments of accomplishments to say that you were able to actually have that happen. You know, the theater had, had put in such great work for so many years. I mean, so many actors have, have come through there. I always tell the story, you know, Sam Jackson started off, one of his first jobs in New York as an actor was working as a carpenter building sets at the Billy Holiday wow. Theater. Transitioned to doing one of his first shows in the city. But so many actors, Felicia Rashad, John Amos, you know, the list goes on and on, went mm-hmm. through that theater. So just to work at the theater was an incredible honor. And I had that history behind me so you know it it really wasn't about me it was about the team and the history of the theater and them getting back into those circles and being recognized for what they do i mean marjorie moon was the executive producer and you know actors theater doesn't pay great but she had been paying actors a salary Mm -hmm. there was no free work at the billy holiday theater if you work there you got a check for rehearsals for performances weekly paycheck every week and and she made that happen 40 some years you know right where right. she's executive director emeritus right now but uh so it was an amazing place to to be at and just an honor to, to work there well it had to be an i mean let's go let's finish out the bio guys look you took home an, an astounding nine awards out of 17 adelco am i saying that correctly that's correct. out of 17 adelco award nominations for excellence in black theater nine out of 17 that in itself is amazing. We had a good run. We, we did some amazing shows. Uh, Cheryl Davis, a playwright, Cheryl Davis, had a show called Maid's Door, which took home a huge number of those awards. But uh, and, and the Adelcos, for, for those who may not know, it's, it's kind of like the Black Tonys in New York. It right, recognizes right. excellence in black theater. They actually had their award ceremony about a week ago. So uh, that really comes from finding great playwrights and and the great actors I knew in New York coming together, you know, getting shows up. So it, it, it was a good run. It was a good run. Wow, that is amazing, like I said, within itself. You know, it also, I've read where the theater, Billy Holiday Theater, dedicated an entire season to you, uh, to your works, commissioned you to pen three new plays for the theater's 2010 through 2011 season, and you are the only playwright to receive such an honor in the theater's 40-plus-year history. 
Yeah, again, that that's all due to Marjorie Moon. And, you know, I, I often joke I wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for Marjorie Moon. Uh, if you don't know that name, um, that's a, a, a theater legend, a black theater legend. Yeah. Um, and I, I wrote my first play in 2007 at the urging of Marjorie. I had been working as a, an actor at the theater, and that show did well. And I did another show, I think, in 2009. Mm-hmm. And she came and was like, oh, what do you think of this idea? Your shows have done really well. So that was that was all Marjorie Moon, you know, pushing me and pushing me. And I, I'm sitting here today with you because of her. Well, kudos to Marjorie Moon. <laughs> I mean, you know, Marjorie, thank you for sending us such an amazing talent. You know, and to say that you wrote your first play in 2007, you know, this is amazing. It's to look at your bio. Guys, you know what? I just want to let you know, uh, Radio Neighbors, you can also, if you want to, no, I'm not going to say if. When you go on to JackieAlexanderProductions.com, you will get all the information that you need on my guest. The bio is amazing. And we're talking about someone who's actually written their first play in 2007. This is, you know, this 10-year run has just been, it just had to be an amazing uh, feat for you. It's been incredible when you look back on it. Like, you know, I, I started as an actor. Um, went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, worked as an actor for about, 10, 15 years in New York and kind of transitioned into writing. I actually wrote a film first in, in 2002. It was called Joy. Right. And we were lucky enough to win the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame Best Feature Film. Wow. And from that point, um, I got calls to direct. And then again, Marjorie, I, I wrote a novel uh, that actually wasn't published in 2012, but Marjorie knew about it. She's like, oh, you should look in the theater. That's your background. And uh, yeah, you know, you blink and... It's happened. So. Well, I mean, with so many accomplishments, your humility is just so. It, I mean, it's it just rides right before you. You know, to say that uh, from the bio that you're looking at, and as humble of uh, talent as you are, this is just amazing. That actually, you know, you're you're just pushing forward, and you're just taking the theater industry by storm, and and you're just a humble person at doing it. Well, you know, I think. It's just honestly, I think because, you know, I often joke it's been a a, a series of uh, lucky, you know, I've worked hard, but I've I've really been blessed. I've really run into people who've helped me and pushed me along and given me the opportunity. And that's what all artists need is is the opportunity. And that's the Mm -hmm. great thing about being in the position I am now. It gives me the chance to give back because I know so many great writers who aren't fortunate enough to have their their plays produced. And, you know, there's so many in New York because there's so few um, venues or or places uh, for African-American writers to get their works produced. And that's why companies like the North Carolina Black Repertory Company and black theater companies across the country are, are, are really, really important to our stories being told because I think it's the responsibility of black theater to tell our stories truthfully and honestly. We can't depend on anybody else to, to tell our stories. No right. one knows us like, like we do. So being in this position to go out and find those writers and pr- provide that opportunity to, to, to get that work out there, it, it's it's a huge honor and responsibility, but being blessed the way I've been blessed is one I, I'm I'm very excited about. Right, and that's amazing in itself because Mr. I believe your good friend, Mr. Weldon Irvine, uh, you know, you you tell a story in your bio where you said, uh, you know, Mr. Irvine, uh, he penned the classic anthem to be young, gifted, and black, and um, he gave advice to you that pretty much went, if you don't like the stories being told about black people. Stop whining and create your own. That was my man, Weldon. Wow. That, you and, know. and how did that, I mean, definitely that had to have an effect on your writing, you know, as a playwright. You know, we were working, Amadou Diallo, we were working on a protest uh, CD after Amadou Diallo had been shot. And uh, right. Weldon was all about taking control of your own art. He didn't believe in waiting, you know, waiting for somebody else to tell the stories, or waiting for somebody else to give you a job, make it happen on your own. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was very interesting cat. Like I, you mentioned, he, he penned the classic to be young, gifted, and black. But if you love hip-hop music, you know Weldon's music because he's right. been sampled nonstop. Right. And so, uh, you know, this was a legendary cat he was talking to, and he, he really went off on me that night because I was whining, as, as we all tend to do, about not having this and not having that. All right, right. And as an artist, you know, he was like, you can't wait for anybody to make it happen. And... It mm. wasn't coming from someone who wasn't walking, you know, walking the walk. 
He right. wasn't just talking. I, I, I know he had put his money into that own CD to make a change, and that right. was Weldon. You know, if a change needed to happen, he wasn't waiting on anyone to make it happen. He was going to do it. I know that's right. You know, so it was coming from somebody who I looked at. I was like, okay, then, yeah, I do need to make this happen. And, you know, thank God he was there to, to give me that advice because my career did take off after that. I mean, the film came out of that conversation. Right. right. Um, I, I wrote, came up with an idea, went to him, and he was like, you work on it and whatever I can do to make it happen. You know, and that was true. He did the score for the film. So, well, well, there And there you have that. It's the Weldon Irvine. I there mean, you, you know, major contribution <laughs> to the career of Mr. Jackie Alexander. You know, I'm going to fast forward, and believe me, Radio Neighbors, for the sake of time, I'm, I'm indeed truly fast forward and beyond uh, you know, this gentleman here is has beyond a smorgasbord of accomplishments. So uh, your relationship with the North Carolina Black Repertory Company began in 2016. I've only been here a little over a year. Uh, the Billy Holiday Theater closed for renovations, so uh, they weren't really producing. And by chance, a couple of months later, I got a call um, asking if I'd be, you know, saying Miss Mabel Robinson was stepping down as artistic director. Yes. Would I be interested in interviewing? And, you know, that's one of those calls where you're like, did that just happen? Did somebody <laughs> just call me to become the artistic director right, of North right. Carolina Black Rap? Wow. Because the only thing I knew about Winston-Salem was the National Black Theater Festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I, I often tell people here, it's like, I don't know if you realize it or not, but you have the most unique event in black theater in the world. Yes. One of the most unique events in, in theater in the world. Uh, so when I, you know, as soon as I started as a working actor in New York, everybody was like, you got to get to Winston-Salem. And I started coming to the festival in 2005, actually met uh, Larry Leon Hamlin, who wow, started yes. the festival. That was his last festival. And I was fortunate enough to meet and, and speak with him at that festival. And, uh, you know, I was just amazed. The energy, the the atmosphere, just seeing all these African-American artists and all this work. It, I, I often say it's everything that people tell the world the African-Americans are not. Right. You know, that festival represents everything we're told we're not. So I fell in love with it, and I was at every festival from 2005 to 2015, except one. I think I missed 2013. So when I got the call about being artistic director, you know, your first thought is, are you serious? Like, right. <laughs> right. Larry Leon Hamlin, Mabel Robinson, wow. and me? Like, that, <laughs> yes, that, yes, that, yes, you know, you, yes. So, um, you know, when I came out, interviewed, I had met Miss Hamlin. I had done work with the theater. Uh, and it's just been great because everybody here is so supportive, and I truly believe in the mission. I mean, North Carolina Black Rep is the first professional black theater in North Carolina. Again, it produces that festival that brings the world of black theater together. Yes. Uh, it's just an incredible uh, honor and opportunity to, to be here. And so I was like, you know, yeah, I'll be there for the interview. Well, that, <laughs> that's, that's beautiful because, you know, I, I ran into uh, uh, Miss Sylvia Hamlin uh, just a month ago here. Uh, when I got, uh, I was instrumental in getting 90.5 after a 15-year hiatus from the homecoming festivities here at Winston-Salem State University. I was instrumental in getting us back into the parade this year. Wonderful. Yeah, and that was just an amazing feat within itself. And I spoke with Miss Hamlin. Superwoman. Uh, you know, yes, <laughs> I know she is tickled pink at having you at the North Carolina Black Repertory Company. You know, and I was explaining to her, I said, well, you know, Miss Hamlin, I helped, uh, 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 I did an interview of her when she dedicated the downtown library here, the okay. new opening of the right. uh, uh, library here in Winston-Salem, the Central Library, and uh, I have that posted online, guys. You can check that out on my website as well, uh, uh, Facebook, Baron Bruce. And I explained to her how such an amazing experience it was for me itself as I participated very closely with, as I was saying with you uh, just before we came on air, uh, how I uh, uh, worked very closely with Brian McLaughlin mm -hmm. at, the, uh, at the National Black Theater Fest, that was an amazing experience. I worked closely with Mr. Oba Babatunde, you know, Emmy Award winners. These are guys that are, you know, were, these are idols of mine. And I was able to get with the North Carolina Black Repertory Company and make that happen. I made them a connection. And I told Miss Hamlin, I want 
90.5 and the North Carolina Black Repertory to be synonymous in events, in all upcoming events. We want you guys to just be a part of everything that we do. That That's great to hear. And, we, you know, I really appreciate you saying that because the, the, the company, the festival, everybody knows about the festival. But people don't realize we do a season of plays right. every year, you know. Um, and, again... I feel it's our responsibility to tell our stories, but to make that happen, we need the support of the community. So what you just said is, is, is crucial to mm-hmm. us succeeding, to us staying vital and relevant and alive. Right. So, uh, you know, we need people to check us out. I, I always tell people I can promise you you're going to be entertained and you're never going to be ashamed. We're right. very conscious about what stories we're telling on stage. Uh, we try to do one world premiere year a year again to discover new writers right we do one black classic and then an additional play and then we do our holiday classic black nativity yes which opens tonight yes and th- you know what i want you to hold on that note because see, i don't want to give it all away at this point right now guys hey listen if we're going to take a brief pause for the cause guys you know how this works uh you know we want to uh keep you informed we want you to get as much information as you can and i want you to know uh, that you can also log on to www.ncblackrep.org or give them a call at 336-723-2266. Again, that's 336-723-2266. It's the North Carolina Black Repertory.org. I'm sitting here with the amazing Jackie Alexander. And we're going to take this quick pause. I'm starstruck right now, so if I'm at a loss for words, guys, don't worry. I'm still in the building. Okay, guys, and we are back right now. Again, I'm sitting here with uh, Jackie Alexander, Artistic Director of the North Carolina Black Repertory. You are listening to Triad and Focus with your man, Baron Bruce. We were just left off. We were talking about what's uh, upcoming tonight. Opening night. Opening night. Black Nativity. Black Nativity. This is a show uh, in New York. I started hearing about this production of Black Nativity over 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I've seen many productions of Black Nativity. So everybody else, you got to see NC Black Rep's production. Uh, Lawrence Evans, who who works with the festival very closely, kept telling me about it. And I got to see it last year. Right. And Miss Mabel Robinson, who who performed in, in New York in the original Langston Hughes production of Black Nativity directs it. And this one, what she does with this show. Right. I watched all eight performances last year, every single one. And it was it just got better and better. Mm -hmm. And I had the good fortune last night of being able to watch the dress rehearsal. And, you know, the the cast changes a little. And, you know, sometimes Holiday Classics is the same show every year. But they had different elements put in this year. Right, Right, right. You have to see this. I mean, I, you said you were at a loss for words. I'm at a loss for words in, in describing what this cast does with the show, what Miss Robinson does, what Tony Gillen does, the, the music director. It's just an amazing, amazing production, entertainment from beginning to end. Uh, and this is kind of our, our, our showpiece. We're growing the theater, you know, trying to do new stuff, growing our programming. But this is our centerpiece. So if you want to get a taste of what the North Carolina Black Repertory Company is all about. Right. Check out Black Nativity. December 1st through December 10th, you will not be disappointed. That's right. Uh, Radio Neighbors, let's, uh, just to give you a heads up here, you will have uh, your chance at getting a uh, discount on the uh, Black Nativity uh, performances. We're going to go into that a little later on in the program, I know. Uh, I just want to let it be known that I have Miss Ashley Wingfield. She stepped into the offices here this morning. She's in studio live with uh, myself and, and Mr. Jackie Alexander. Good morning to you, Miss Wingfield. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, you know, again, Miss Wingfield and I, we met at the Whitney M. Yellen Gala uh, just this past, I believe it was October. I was mm-hmm. the uh, MC, and I was so nervous. I don't know why I was so nervous at the Whitney M. Young Gala, you know. But uh, uh, it that was a beautiful experience. But here I'm sitting now with Mr. Jackie Alexander, Artistic Director. And again, guys, you have to go on JackieAlexanderProductions.com. You will see a bio that is unbelievable. Mr. Alexander, I just wanted to say uh, here that you were speaking about new voices, Mm -hmm. uh, bringing on new voices into the uh, into the stage area. So h- how do we go about doing that? How, what, what are you doing? Well, again, the company, we're committed. We want to do one 
world premiere by an African-American writer uh, each season. Right. Uh, we did Angelica Cherie's The Sting of White Roses, which uh, we did a production during our season, and then we brought it back for the festival. We parted with, partnered with uh, Susan G. Komen. Uh, the show dealt with breast cancer. And again, black theaters across the country, I think it's our responsibility, our job, to discover those new voices. You know, regional theaters, the, the white theaters, they do one show per year. It's normally right. August Wilson or Lorraine Hansberry. Right. So we have to uh, be the vehicle to find these new voices. We have to be the vehicle to to say what our stories are, stay true to our stories. So that that's really big for me because, again, coming from New York and knowing so many writers who can't find a place to get their work produced. Yes. That that that's really big for us. So that's something new we're going to do at the festival. We also have you know we created some events like meet and greets for new playwrights to meet producers. Right. Uh, at the last festival, we had the only three African American producers on Broadway were at the festival. Wow! So and we had an event where playwrights new could come in and meet and talk with these people. We have to be the vehicle to connect these people. So we're in charge of our stories being told. Right. And that's it that is so important that our stories get told by us. For by, us, by us. us. For yes. us by us. You know, and you know, Black Nativity, I was online watching a video that included Miss Robinson regarding the she was explaining Black Nativity, you know, it's it's the Basic version of Black Nativity, you know, it's Black Nativity, it's Nativity, the Nativity story, but told by us, right. and it brings a totally different perspective of it. It's just a whole new, whole new thing happening here. This is like an explosion from the very beginning of, of energy. It, words, I, I don't have the words to. Re- you have to be there, <laughs> right. December first. You got to get there and experience it because it's just, it's beautiful. Uh, the, the culture, the way it's expressed, the way the story is being told. Right. And she's just a genius at the pictures. The pictures she puts on stage is amazing. The costuming, the lights. I mean, I always tell people, you can go to Broadway and pay hundreds of dollars to see a show. You won't see anything better. I mean, right. you won't be entertained any more than what will happen at with Black Nativity. Well, we're talking about a man here, okay, that's penned, what, six off-Broadway plays? Am I correct in saying that? Uh Actually, seven. I co-wrote one. Okay, so seven. call me corrected. Seven <laughs> off-Broadway plays, guys. And I've been to off-Broadway plays. Let me tell you something. Okay, I'm going to say this. Some There's been very... Oh, sometimes you find an off-Broadway play that is much better than the on-Broadway play. You know, you'd be surprised what's happening around the corners, guys, <laughs> out there in Manhattan. And your plays, I mean, you have, what is it, The Legend, I believe. Um, we did The Legend of Buster Neal earlier right. this season uh, in October, and we're actually bringing that back in May. Uh, yes. This this play kind of examines uh, fatherhood, the, the, the true definition of fatherhood, examines yes. the... Uh, responsibility, drugs, and and so many issues. And we kind of focused on kids. We did one performance where we sponsored, I think, 250 kids to come out to the show. And that's really the focus of bringing it back, of having this dialogue uh, of what it means to be a man. The show came out of a discussion I heard between my uncles and younger cousins. Right. Uh, These are men. I'm from New Orleans, so these are men who grew up in the 50s in in Louisiana. And and my younger cousins who, you know, in their teenage years and in the 90s and they kind of had a very different opinion of what it meant to be a man and this play kind of examines how that definition has kind of been warped over the years (laughs) right right, you know i didn't know what word to use but uh and and it was really great to see the kids there and have this dialogue and this conversation and um that's what we're looking to do so again the 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 i think the first week in may we're bringing that show back if you know any uh groups kids uh that we want to especially at risk kids we yes. want to get them into the show we're going to work to make sure we can get make it affordable to get groups like that so contact me personally if you know any people well guess what i'm making a personal shout out right now to mr nathan ross freeman authoring action yes you know nathan uh i spoke with him uh, a few weeks back here uh they were at the milton Rhodes art center uh, it was the Taste of the Triad, the 8th Annual mm-hmm. Taste of the Triad event uh, that I was asked to attend. Met with Mr. Uh, Freeman, uh, met the group of youth uh, there at, um, as they performed spoken word. Definitely got to get them involved. 
with the uh, you know with the national uh, North Carolina Black Repertory. It's the North Black, it's the North Carolina Black Repertory, guys. You will not be disappointed in anything that this company is putting out. It is a beautiful thing. It's Black Nativity. Guess what? We are going to take a quick pause for us. We're in the home stretch, guys, of Triad in Focus. I'm your man, Baron Bruce, sitting in studio live with the accomplished Mr. Jackie Alexander. And I'm also in here with uh, Miss Wingfield, Ashley Wingfield. She's going to come on and she's going to say a few words as well. But in the meantime, I want you guys to stick around. It is 5 to the hour. You're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, again, stick around with me. 90.5 FM. Try it and focus. Try it and focus, and we are back. I'm joined in the studio with Mr. Jackie Alexander, artistic director for the North Carolina Black Repertory Company. Uh, when we last left, you were telling us everything about Black Nativity. You were telling us about the National Black Theater Fest. How do we support the North Carolina Black Repertory Company? You know, there are many uh, support levels. We have a Marftastic Society. Uh, we have a theater guild. You can go online, ncblackrep.org, to get all that information and, and come out and support us. But the most important way to support us is come to the shows. Come out to We've the shows. We've got this huge theater at the Arts Council Theater, over 500 seats. And again, we are telling our stories. Yes. And, and it's... It's so important that we get the support from the community to keep that going. Not for profit theaters is like I said, it's always a struggle to keep it going. Mm -hmm. But that audience, having the audience to tell the story, come and be a part of our family. That's what we're doing. We're, you know, we're really focused on uh, telling our stories, focusing on the community, making a change in the community. But we need the community to join us. We need our people to come out and support us. Yes, we need our people to come out and support. You know, that's, I mean, that should be the slogan yes. right there the, alone. The, the, the biggest thing you can do to help us is come to the shows. Yes. Come to the shows. Uh, again, you can go to the website and see Black Rep, see the season of shows. We've got Top Dog, Underdog coming up in March, a Pulitzer Prize uh, winner by Susan Laurie Parks. And then we're bringing back the legend of Buster Neal. Uh, we're working on an incredible season for 2018, 2019. You know, we'll be announcing that in late March. So just start following us. Check us out. Check, and guess what? Check us out. Indeed, North Carolina Black Rep dot org. Guys, we have come to the end of our production here at Triad and Focus. I wish to thank my esteemed guest, Mr. J no, I'm going to start this over. My esteemed guest, artistic director for the North Carolina Black Repertory Company, Mr. Jackie Alexander. It's opening night tonight, Black Nativity. And be sure to join me next Saturday, December the 9th. It's the Noonday Hustle, giving you smooth jazz, throwback R&B, neo-soul, and more. I have my guest, 
Yes, indeed. Special guest in store for you. The New Day Hustle. Mr. From Jackie Pacifica, Alexander, I love every minute democracy of it. Now. Thank you, man. Thank Do you for having us. Appreciate Tillerson it. Do you want Rex on the job, Mr. President? He's here. Rex is here. He's here. Do you want him to stay in his job? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Will President Trump replace Secretary of State Rex Tillerson with CIA Director Mike Pompeo, then, according to The New York Times, pick Cotton. That's Republican Senator Tom Cotton to replace Pompeo at the CIA.